So so, so where are we? We're not in California, that's for sure. You're are we in Kansas? State, though. <laughs> we are in a sea state. Nope. We're in Durango, Colorado. We left home. I don't even know how long ago. Two days ago. Tuesday night at 5.46 p.m. We drove all night long through California, through a corner of Nevada, through a chunk of Arizona. We stopped in Flagstaff. We got breakfast. We got a little internet so the boys could start their school day. And then we kept driving through Arizona, through briefly a touch of New Mexico. We spent like three minutes in New Mexico. No, a minute and 46 seconds. We spent a minute and 46 seconds in New Mexico. He was recording. I feel like we maybe need to go back to New Mexico at some point. Uh, no, I think that should count. That should count. <laughs> uh, four Corners Monument closed. Four Corners, so much is closed. Um, but we are tonight in Durango, Colorado. The main question is why in the world are we here? So we got something. We did. Yeah. And we should probably reveal it. Should we? I think we should do it in a dramatic fashion. Three, Three two, two, one. one. So why didn't we just cut to this dramatic reveal of the trailer? That never happened, did it? Isn't that what we just did? <laughs> yeah. As it turns out, it's really tricky to film while you're learning new things. We were learning all about our trailer, and that took up a lot of time. And the boys were still going to school while we were on our trip as well. So a lot of our days were about finding them an internet connection and a place to work so that they could go to school remotely. You just kept thinking, we're going to start filming tomorrow. We're going to get some great footage tomorrow. And then we were home. <laughs> yeah. um, so the story of getting the trailer, this story really starts about two years ago in the summer of 2018. We went on an epic two-week road trip through the Pacific Northwest, and we camped in a tent the whole way. Um, a tent about the size of this trailer. It's true. It's no coincidence. Um, we loved being out and seeing things, even sleeping in the tent. But we realized that a lot of things about that trip would have been easier if we'd had a trailer. Well, we really wanted something small that could fit on our driveway. And we wanted something light that we could tow easily. And there's four of us that needed to sleep four people. You found that episode of How It's Made. Where they uh, built an alto, which looked pretty cool because the whole ceiling lifted up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once we saw that, we were pretty much convinced we wanted an alto. But at that point, the altos had that really long waiting list. It was like a year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we placed our order in October of 2018, and we had planned to pick up in the summer of 2020. <laughs> I think, what was our original pickup date? Was it June? It was June 25th, yeah. Mm. Yeah. That didn't happen for some reason. <laughs> Something happened in the world. <laughs> so Safari Condo, the folks who make the Alto, they build all of their trailers in Quebec, and really that's the only place you can get them in North America, which was totally fine with us. We had an epic trip planned. We had, oh, it was going to be great. We were going to go one week out to Quebec and then four weeks coming home. There were spreadsheets. We had a lot of good national parks planned. Mm-hmm. Well... Same thing happened to us that happened to anyone who had plans in the summer of 2020. But then the question was, could we get our trailer at all? The production was delayed in when Quebec was in quarantine, which made perfect sense. But even once they started to build the trailers again, the border was closed. We can't get to Canada. Um, so we didn't know if we'd be able to get our trailer at all. Fortunately, uh huh, they worked out a deal with a place in Colorado called Durango RV, which is so much closer to us that we were able to get there a day and a half mm -hmm. from, yeah. instead of instead of spending a whole week going up there. Yeah, um, but st <laughs> still, <laughs> there were a lot of unknowns in that as well. We had, we had no idea when it would be there. We had no idea when we'd have to pick it up. We had no idea how this would work with school. So we had to figure out some way to get our kids to school and get there, get the trailer and get home with a minimum of school time disruptions right so when 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 did we hear that it arrived september 25th okay and we were there to pick it up on october 8th which for us is a pretty spontaneous trip definitely considering how much you like to plan that was really spontaneous it was hard but let's say it was fun we just we really needed to get our trailer we didn't want um like the snow to start falling in colorado right. or 
anything else kind of 2020-ish happening to this trailer. Yeah. We wanted, after two years, we wanted to have it in our driveway. We didn't want to be new to driving a trailer and having to drive a trailer on snow or ice. That would be bad. That would be really bad. So we knew that we were looking at a fairly short trip and we were going to try to avoid crowds and other people generally and hotels as much as possible, but somehow like still see things and feel like we'd had a big adventure. <laughs> We found a couple things to see. We did. Yeah. We did. So we we decided it would be best to drive straight through from home all the way there to Durango. Mm -hmm. um, we we took turns and drove all night long to yep. uh, skip a night of hotel. Yep. We went. We left home in the Bay Area and we got all the way to Flagstaff, Arizona, where we took a quick break for breakfast and the internet so the kids could get their school day started, and then we kept on driving to Durango. But we did spend one night at the RV resort right next to where we picked up the trailer. Right, that's the Oasis RV Resort and Cottages in Durango. And that was amazing. We stayed in a cabin there and um, we could see the Altos in the parking lot of the RV rental place, which was really fun. This cabin had a really good view too. It really did. The cabins were amazing. We would recommend them. We only had one night there, but I would have stayed longer if we didn't have such an exciting day planned the next did, day. Did you notice that that cabin was on a spot that looked like it used to be an RV site? That they built I the cabin? Didn't and they had, that. They, had, they had the cabin connected to the water. They had the 50 amp outlet connected oh, to the cabin. Oh no. I that didn't. That was cool. cool. Yeah. That's cool. I'm sure they started with an RV spot and then kind of upgraded as they went. But they have a bunch of cabins now, and I would they would recommend them. Oh, oh do you remember the um, place we ate dinner at? Yes, that was pretty good too. Taco Boy. Yeah, Taco, Taco Boy? Boy. You didn't like the name, but it was really good. Really good tacos. Yeah. So we had such an amazing morning picking up our trailer at Durango RV Rentals. Everyone there was super kind and very professional and very flexible with us as the kids went to school. Yeah, I feel like we really got a good tour of all the ins and outs of everything about this trailer. We learned yeah. how everything hooks up, how not to use things, how to use things. Absolutely. They know um, their altos. And, and even they, they helped us hitch it up to our truck the first time and made sure that the, the trailer sat level with the truck. Right. No, but they brought like extra staff people over. They got it. They made it absolutely right. And they told us, um, because we were just camping next door, if anything goes wrong, just give us a call. We'll come over and help you. So that was super, super nice. So then we stayed overnight at a campsite at the same place we had the cabin. Mm -hmm. And that was also... And then we didn't get to stay there very long. I would have stayed there longer if, if we yeah. could have. Yeah. Um, but then we have uh, the uh, Grand Canyon that we yeah. went to next. Yeah. That was a pretty long drive. Yeah, I think we need to adjust the lighting. Do you see I have a light on my nose? All right, so we picked up a trailer. We stayed overnight at the campsite. Yes. Then we drove to the Grand Canyon. Yes, Yeah. I, I drove most of the way through the Navajo Nation one way, and you drove the way through the Navajo Nation on the way back. That was the day that we, was the last day the boys had school. That was the last day we had to figure out the internet for school. Um, yeah, there's not much internet <laughs> no. driving through that part of the country. <laughs> no. We stopped in Cortez, Colorado, and enjoyed the... They had a little internet at the Safeway there. Right. We enjoyed yeah. <laughs> we enjoyed the Safeway parking lot. And that, that reminds me of my favorite thing about this trailer. Yes. And why this trailer. Yes. It's the same length as our truck. So if you pull through two parking spots, you take the two parking spots exactly. And people yes. can still get around you. Yes. So we spent a little time in Cortez so Miles could take his math quiz. And then we drove through, back through the Navajo Nation. We went through the Four Corners area twice in three days, twice in two days. Yeah. Uh, do you remember how long we spent in New Mexico? Welcome to New Mexico. Thanks. We're going to leave in a second. One minute and 46 seconds. See you later, New Mexico. Bye, Colorado. So, um, so we got to the Grand Canyon campsite pretty late. Right. And we set up in the dark. We did. 
we did you we did good. You did good setting up in the dark. That kind of proved to me that we were right about getting this trailer because that was the thing that we wanted to be able to do, right? Like get somewhere, set up quickly. Yeah, I mean, because you don't have to set everything up. All we did was plug in the power so we'd have some AC, uh -huh. and we didn't really need the rest. We already had water. Yeah. <laughs> well, when we got to Tusian, which is where the outside the Grand Canyon, we didn't need the AC. We needed the heater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So where did we stay? We stayed two nights in the Grand Canyon Camper Village, which is different than the Grand Canyon Trailer Village. The Trailer Village is actually within the borders of the park. The Grand Canyon Camper Village, where we stayed because we were making our reservations much later, <laughs> much closer, um, is outside the park by, what, a hefty two miles or something? It was not far. It was um, not far. It's also interesting how we got into the park for free we did yes oh good point we got into the park for free because we yeah. have a fourth grader yes um noah is in fourth grade and if you have a fourth grader in your family you definitely need to take advantage of the every kid in a park program i think is what it's called we um filled out a form before we left Noah had to take a quiz about mm -hmm. like his perfect park experience or something. The only trick is you have to print out the certificate before you get to the park. You can't do it on your phone or anything. So you have to have right. a paper printout. Um, but they also ran out of passes to give to him to sign. So we're going to have to go to another national park and get his pass. Coming up soon. But I love the way that the, the ranger, that made me so happy. The ranger was like, you have a fourth grader. He was so excited. I mean, there was people behind us lined up. And he still made a fuss. So that was very cool. Um, yeah, so we went to the Grand Canyon. We saw, we, we did a walk along the South Rim. Mm -hmm. And then we thought we'd wait for a bus to get back to where we wanted to. We thought that maybe the buses weren't running. Mm -hmm. So then we walked back to uh, where we started. And then we decided we would drive to the East Rim. Right. To check out the sunset. Right. Part of what we were trying to do in the Grand Canyon was avoid the crowds as much as possible, which at a place like the Grand Canyon is kind of tricky. Um, I mean, we were there in the off season. Um, it was still crowded and people were eh, maybe half and half on masks. People were not totally embracing the mask culture. Um, so after a short walk along the main rim trail, we decided to kind of move to somewhere less crowded. And that turned out to be a really good strategy. There I was think. somebody having a wedding there when we yeah. got there. Which so was, we, it was a small wedding, uh -huh. but it was, it was like at a pull-off kind of area. Well, we drove out the East Rim. So on the East Rim Trail, I think is what it was called, out toward the Watchtower. Remember, you were aiming yeah. for the Watchtower. That, that area was closed. We couldn't get to it. But the next overlook back towards the main canyon was open and that's where we saw the wedding and we took pictures of the sunset oh it's beautiful uh the boys did some crazy chasing thing behind us they'd been in the car a while by then yeah, yeah. um and then we decided we wanted to take some night sky pictures yes too. astrophotography because obviously the sun had just set when we took the sunset photos so it wasn't that long until we got to twilight while we were waiting to get to twilight, we said, well, why don't we just keep driving back so that we're not all the way in as far as we could be on the park. Mm -hmm. We'll use that time to get closer to the exit. And we found probably one of the last pullouts with parking spots to set up and do some astrophotography. So I think I got three seconds of video out of maybe 30 minutes of shooting pictures. Yeah. That, but it was incredible. It was so beautiful. There was very little moon. We could see the Milky Way. Yep. It was and pretty Mars cool. was up. So um, while we were staying at the Grand Canyon, at the Grand Canyon Camper Village, we spent a little bit of time um, in the town there. We forgot to mention, before we got to the Grand Canyon... This is what I'm talking about. We went to the IMAX theater, mm -hmm. and we saw the 1980s <laughs> IMAX film. Mm -hmm. That I saw when I was Miles' age. Secrets of the Grand Canyon? I think it's Secrets of the Grand Canyon. Secrets of the Grand Canyon. It, it maybe didn't age well, but it had great scenery. <laughs> Agreed on both points. Um, no, it didn't age well, but we used it as a conversation point on several, <laughs> on 
several topics we got out of that. Um, so it's a learning experience. It's a learning experience. And, um, but, the, but the scenery was lovely. And I think that was the first IMAX movie the kids had seen. Probably, yeah. yeah. So they were excited by the size of the screen. When I first saw it, it was in a dome that went all the way around me, which was really cool. We also had that discount coupon from the nice lady at the store. So right. we got in for all half four price. of us for, yeah, I feel like it was even less than half price. But that's what happens when you go someplace in October. <laughs> and then um, after we did, so we did the IMAX, then we did the Grand Canyon uh, walk, then we did the East Rim, then we did the astrophotography, then we came back to our campsite. And had some s'mores in the microwave. We did s'mores both nights at the Grand Canyon so the first night we got there okay. while you were setting up and the boys needed to sit in the car after a long day of sitting in the car I bribed them with microwave s'mores so um, so the next day we just had a lazy start to the day yeah we put the we put everything away we packed up the trailer and then we went on to I guess Needles California right we drove through to Needles um, the desert view RV resort was lovely. That looked like a nice retirement place. <laughs> it really did. But they had something that beat out any national preserve as far as our kids were concerned. A swimming pool. They had a swimming pool. And the boys hadn't been in a swimming pool all summer. They had a swimming pool that was open. So we decided to throw out the window the plans to go to the Mojave National Preserve, which when we drove through it the next day, it was a long way out. It would have been oh, a yeah. long drive and a long drive back. It would have been 50 miles out, 50 miles back. Yeah. That would have been long. So smart choice. The Desert View Oasis RV Resort. No, Desert View RV Resort. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, it was really geared for really big rigs. Well, we, we used a big rig site because they wanted to make sure we had Wi-Fi access. Mm -hmm. And they yes. had really good Wi-Fi. Really good Wi-Fi. Really calm, beautiful, private sites. Yes, they had ginormous uh, oleander yes. bushes between every site. Yes. Um, I don't think many people use it as an overnight or short trip spot. It, it looks like some people choose to call it home yes, permanently. Snowbirds. Yeah. yeah, but um, they have a beautiful pool, and our kids were so delighted <laughs> to have had a chance to swim. Yeah, so we went to Needles, and then the next day... We drove home. We drove home. That was a long drive. And I think what we will do... Um, I think we'll do a, an RV tour, a trailer tour. At some point, we'll do a separate trailer tour video. But not today. So, should we camp here tonight? <sighs> I would like to. Boys have school in the morning, but we know where the internet access is. Mm -hmm. I have to go to work in the morning. You can't work from here. I have been working from here. This is what we're calling the executive suite. <laughs> yeah, we have a new room for our house now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's air conditioned because mm -hmm. the rest of our house is not air conditioned. Yes. All, All right. right. Should we share a picture of this crazy setup? Oh yeah, I definitely. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna. I'll share that on Instagram because what? I don't know if anybody noticed. I don't know if you know, but we have an Instagram account. Let's see. How do I want to do this? I think I want to do it like this. Okay. Oh, but I kind of wanted you leaning in so you get the. There we go. Lean in. Just so you know, our camera is currently set up in our bathroom. <laughs> we will uh, include more fun gems like that in our tour. <laughs> the tripod is on the toilet. When would you ever say that in your life? So do you think it's time for us to tell the story about uh, quail snail and why oh. quail snail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people have been asking, um, namely my mom and your mom. <laughs> I like talking about some people like there are many followers, but they're mostly our moms. Hi so to all of our subscribers who are all of our relatives. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mom! Um, so the quail we've talked about. The quail is the California state bird, and um, really just adorable. I mean, you know, you can't, mm -hmm. you can't, you can't help but love the quail. But the snail refers to our trailer, and um, we'll insert a photo here to indicate why that is. But the Safari Condo logo is of a snail. Also, they rhyme. So you might say we're sitting in the snail. We're sitting in the snail. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode because we are sure sporadic in putting them out. <laughs> you can't rely on us to release an episode every Sunday, so you need to hit the notification bell, wouldn't you say? I would say. Yeah. I think we can come up with content to come out every Sunday if we don't travel every single time. I think we just need to admit that we are um, full-time professionals and not full-time YouTubers. So we need to just kind of, you know, you, you're going to need to hit the notification bell. <laughs> We're having a contest right now for the best tagline <laughs> for this channel. We have no idea what to say. Mm -hmm. The winner gets a free mention on this channel <laughs> with all of its 11 <laughs> subscribers. You don't want to miss an opportunity don't like that. Don't miss out. <laughs>